Hey everyone, and welcome to MDK Production School, Season 1, Episode 5. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at everything the step sequencer can do. We've already covered a bit about the step sequencer. For example, we know that left-clicking allows us to place notes, and right-clicking allows us to delete them. But there's quite a lot more to it than that, and there's a lot of fun stuff that you can play around with. At the end of Lesson 4, we added this instance of Massive, and we didn't actually do anything with it, so right now it's just kind of cluttering up our project. So let's go ahead and delete this. There's three ways you can go about doing this. First, right click and choose delete. Or you can hit alt and delete on your keyboard for the hotkey. Or you can go up to channels and choose delete selected. So all of them really do the same thing, it's just whichever way you prefer or whichever way is quickest. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And as that message says, keep in mind that if you delete a channel, you cannot undo that. So if you're unsure if you want to use it in the future, it's probably best to just leave it sitting in your project for the time being. The next cool feature about the step sequencer is that you can actually group different channels together. As we saw before, we have this little drop down list at the bottom. And right now, all it says is all, audio clips, or unsorted. But what if we want to add our own group to that? Say we want to take our kick, clap, hat, and snare, and we want to combine them together into a group called percussion. To do this, first select the kick channel, then hold shift on your keyboard, and select the next three channels as well. So just like with deleting, there's a few ways we can do this. The first way is by hitting alt and then G on your keyboard, which brings up the option to name this group. The second way is by going here and right clicking and going add filter group. The third and final way is by going to channels and then choosing group selected. So let's name this percussion. So as you can see, our step sequencer shrinks because we're now looking at the percussion group. Once again, if we switch back to all, we can see everything. Suppose you keep working with this project and you discover later on that you don't really want to have your kick grouped with your clap and you don't want your snare grouped with your hi-hat. The easiest way to fix this is to right click where it says percussion and just delete that filter group. This is another thing that you can't undo, so make sure that you really want to change this before going through with it. If you do, click OK and they're now separated again. Right now, our step sequencer looks pretty messy. It has some color to it, but the colors don't really mean anything. It's got this weird labeling on some of them, and some stuff is just kind of out of order. For example, we have our bass just sitting here, and then there's two audio clips, then we have our FL keys, then another audio clip, and then we have Harmer. There's a few things we can do to clean this up. As you guys know, we can shift click on a channel and rename it, but if you click this box right here, we can actually choose a different color for that channel as well. Let's choose yellow for all of our percussion. Once you've selected your color, just press enter, and that channel is now yellow. Let's do the same thing for the next three channels. Perfect, okay, now that those are obnoxiously bright yellow, let's go on to organizing the rest. We still have this groove snare clap 21, and its name looks kind of obnoxious right now. Don't forget, if you wanna remember the sample's name, you can just click on it and look at this drop-down arrow. It tells you exactly what that sample's called, regardless of what you name this channel. So let's go ahead and shift click that, name it just snare clap, and let's click on the color list. And if you notice here, this yellow that appears is the exact same yellow that we used here. So this bar on the left side shows your most recent colors that you've used. It's a nice little tool that just helps you organize things much more quickly. Okay, next let's take our instruments and let's move them closer together. To do this, select FL keys by clicking this little black oval beside it, and press Alt and Up on your keyboard. Hit that twice, and it'll put it right next to the analog bass. Let's do the same thing for our instance of Harmer. You can also press Alt down to move it down. Let's quickly color code these. We have one bass instrument, so let's make it red, and let's just name it bass. Then for our FL keys and our Harmer, they're both kind of lead instruments. So let's make each of these blue. Lastly, we have these three audio clips. So let's clean them up as well. 
This next audio clip, we didn't actually end up using. That was just one of the examples. So let's right click and let's delete that. It's not totally necessary to do all of that, but it makes it a lot easier to work with. Now you know that when you select something that's yellow, it's gonna be one of your percussive instruments. If you select something blue, it's one of your leads. If you select something green, it's one of your audio clips and so on and so forth. If you'd like to take your organizing a step further, you can also right click and set an icon for each of these. I prefer to leave them blank, so to remove the icon, just choose this X in the top left corner and that clears it. Okay, so let's make a new pattern and we'll just name this test beat. And let's quickly put together a drum beat. A really handy feature that you can use to quickly create a drum beat is to right click and take a look at fill each two steps, fill each four steps, and fill each eight steps. Let's click on fill each four steps. So what this does is it puts a note on every fourth step. If we choose fill each two steps, it's on every second step. And if we choose fill each eight steps, it's on every eighth step. Let's go ahead and leave that at four for our standard four on the floor kick drum. Now let's add our clap and let's put a hi-hat pattern, something like this. Now that looks obnoxious, but don't worry, we're gonna make it sound better. And let's go back and put our offbeat snare in again. Suppose that this clap pattern was a bit more complex, maybe something like this. Suppose you wanted to move this layer to your snare clap layer, but you didn't wanna have to go and re-click every single box. It's not too confusing for this one, but sometimes it can be a bit of a bother and it does slow down your workflow. The simplest way is to select this layer and hit Control X. And just like most other programs out there, just hit Control V and you can paste it in there instead. Let's take a listen to how this sounds. So not too bad, kind of a Moombaton groove. Let's slow it down so it actually fits that genre a bit better. Let's say 112. Let's listen to it now. So the one thing that's really bothering me with this is that our hi-hat sounds super robotic. It sounds like the exact same sample is being triggered the exact same way every single time. And that's because that's absolutely what's happening. So to mix things up, let's select our hi-hat layer, close the sample properties, and in the top right, we have this little box that just looks like a graph. Go ahead and click that. This brings up what is known as the graph editor, which allows us to quickly adjust certain parameters. At the bottom here, you can see it says velocity. And if we scroll to the left, changes to pan. And if we scroll to the right, it goes through a bunch of other different parameters. Let's set it back to velocity. In layman's terms, velocity is simply referring to the amount of volume that each note is being played with. If we tweak the graph to look like this, and now we press play, you can hear the volume of the hi-hat follow this graph. Let's undo that by hitting Control Z. And now let's make something that's a bit more rhythmic. I'm just gonna follow a standard accent pattern of strong, weak, medium, weak. So first one is strong, second one is weak, medium, weak, and then it repeats. Now that we have that laid out, let's take another listen to it. It's kind of subtle, so let's go ahead and right click this green circle right here and choose solo. This will allow us to just hear the hi-hat by itself. Now let's press play. We could even take this a step further by making it louder on the first beat and on the third beat, and by turning down the velocity on all of our weak beats just a little bit more. So now let's take a listen to this. So to unsolo it, right click and choose solo again. As you'll see, it has a check mark. When you choose it again, that check mark disappears and it stops being soloed. Let's press play and hear how the full beat sounds together. Sounds pretty cool, and it sounds a lot better than it did before we tweaked the velocity. Let's go ahead and close the graph editor, and now we'll click on the button right beside it, which is the keyboard editor. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I pretty much never use this keyboard editor. It's way easier to just use the piano roll. But if you're in a pinch and you need to do something really quick or something really simple, 
it can work just fine. The keyboard editor gives you a keyboard for every single step inside of your step sequencer. Let's change the note value on our first few steps to C6, and let's change the note value on our next few steps to C4. Now, this is probably gonna sound pretty bad, but let's give it a listen. Let's go ahead and hit Control-Z, and then hit Control-Alt-Z to undo the next step as well. For this next part, let's delete our Moonbaton groove, and we'll just put in a standard four on the floor snare. So on every two and on every four. And let's just remove the offbeat snare as well. The reason I did that is because I want to explain what this fader up in the top right does. This is our swing fader, and as we increase it, it makes the overall drum beat sound as though it's being played in swing instead of straight. If we press play right now, our step sequencer is playing it in a manner known as straight, which gives it a sort of rock and roll feel. It's really four on the floor, and to be honest, it still does sound somewhat robotic. Listen to what happens if we turn up the swing meter. It sounds a lot more shuffled, and it has a lot more feel to it. So this swing fader is pretty cool, but to be honest, you probably won't use it very much once you get more comfortable with FL Studio, and in particular, once you get more comfortable with the piano roll. Once you learn how to use the piano roll, you'll find it really easy to just go in and program your own swing rhythm without having to use this fader. At this point, you might be questioning if the step sequencer is just limited to a one bar pattern, and it's not. If you go up here to the top left, and you click and drag this upwards, you can actually extend the length of the step sequencer pattern. One thing to keep in mind is that this number simply shows the number of beats that are in the pattern. So since it says eight, we know there's eight beats. And because this is in a 4-4 time signature, we know that that means there are two measures in this pattern. Something important to keep in mind is that even though you can increase this all the way up to 64, the step sequencer can't actually have more than 16 beats per pattern. So this pattern, even though it says 64 beats, is only 16 beats long. Okay, let's go up to the top now and right click our pattern selector and choose our bass pattern. So if we press play, you'll notice that the bass line we wrote in the piano roll is actually two bars long. Now, if we right click here and choose fill each four steps, and then we press play, you'll notice that the kick drum stops playing on the second measure. The reason that the kick drum stops playing is because our step sequencer is only one bar long, while our bass line is two bars long, and we're playing them in the same pattern. To fix this, we can click this button in the top left corner, which is labeled as Repeat Step Sequencer. If we turn it on, it means that the step sequencer and the piano roll are playing independently. The piano roll is gonna play for two bars, but the step sequencer is going to play this bar once, and then it's going to restart and play this bar for a second time. Watch what happens now when I press play. So you'll notice the kick doesn't ever stop playing now. This is handy when you're combining the step sequencer and the piano roll on the same pattern, but generally speaking, you'll probably have them split up anyways, so you probably won't run into this too often. Okay, two final, really simple things before we wrap this tutorial up. Suppose that this bass preset is something that you've worked really hard on. You really like the sound, and you don't want to have to add a brand new one and then remake that sound from scratch. The easiest workaround for this is to right click on it and choose clone. So what this does is it makes bass number two, and bass number two will sound exactly the same as bass originally did. Also, one last quick little tip. Suppose you don't actually want this bass number two, but you want to add something different. Instead of deleting this and then going channels add one or dragging it in from the browser, we can simply right click and choose replace. And that brings up the same menu. So if I choose boo bass instead, that loads up an instance of boo bass and replaces that bass number two. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Don't forget, if you're interested in trying FL Studio for yourself, there's a link in the description to save 10% off all ImageLine software. When you're ready, click that next button, and I'll see you in the next lesson.